Even with this video, to tell you the truth, I'm fucking terrified <laughs> of how this is gonna land. I'm fucking terrified. This was the first time I had ever been at the middle of an internet rage fest and it fucking sucked. What's up everybody, Jack Conti here, CEO of Patreon. So I published a video a few months back where I talked through a string of my failures and it seemed to really connect with people. So I wanted to make a sequel to that video, but with a twist. Instead of going through a string of my failures, I'm gonna do a deep dive into one of the most cringy, worst moments of not just my entire career, but of my life. I wrote a blog post in 2014 and it ended up being the first time I was ever at the center of an internet rage fest. My co-founder and I had just launched Patreon. We are working on a business called Patreon. We help creators make a living. And Pomplamoose, my band with my wife, had just booked our biggest tour ever. A full US tour with 20 stops. Our biggest tour ever. Patreon had only just started, so the company wasn't successful yet, and I had no idea what it was about to become. And I wasn't taking a salary as CEO. Pomplamoose was how we made money. I didn't think of myself as a tech CEO at the time. That's why this tour we booked was so important to us because I hadn't been pulling my weight for the band for months and I felt like I was letting Natalie down. I felt like my relationship with the person I love most in the world was at stake. And I also loved being on the road with Pomplamoose and I just felt like I had to go. To do 24 shows in 30 days is not unheard of, but it is a lot. Arrive at two or three with a lunch break, get into the next venue, do sound check. I was taking calls from the van and trying to do meetings. I don't know if that's a Q4 goal. I think that's like the next six months goal. The doors open at the venue at seven. Pomplamoose goes on at nine or 10, play for a couple hours, finish at 11 or 12, and then do the whole thing again the next day. The tour ended up being so awesome. The band was slamming. We did this crazy exercise with the audience every night where we would slowly form a mosh pit. We hung out with fans after the shows and signed autographs. Natalie and I crowd surfed. There were people showing up with Pomplamoose tattoos, people bringing us cookies and making us art, which we saved. It was such a wonderful connection with fans. It was really beautiful. When we got back from the tour, I was definitely exhausted, but I was also super energized. And then a couple of weeks went by and we got our numbers back from our business manager and we started to see how the tour landed from a financial standpoint. Our total income for the tour was 135,000 bucks and we had about 147,000 in expenses. So we ended up losing just under 12,000 bucks. But honestly, that didn't feel like a big deal to us because touring had never really been how we made money as a band. We had commercial deals, iTunes income, streaming income, and we weren't relying on touring as a revenue source for the band. But we thought it would be a good idea to kind of write it all up in a blog post so people could see the inside baseball of how the financials of our tour worked. So we wrote this blog post laying out the whole thing, all the income, all the expenses broken out by category. We thought it was cool because we were being very transparent, but we didn't think too much about it. When I woke up the next morning, the post had over a hundred thousand views. And that is the moment where I thought like, wow, this is awesome. Our article's like really getting viewed a lot. And I was really excited about that. Then there was a wave of press that was like mostly positive. It was just like, hey, this band just released their financials. Check this out. And then a couple days later, there was a second wave that was like a negative wave. A lot of the articles said that we didn't know how to run a business, that we were idiots. There was a post on Pitchfork about how incompetent we were as business people. It definitely gave me pause. It's really embarrassing to have headlines about you that you don't know how to run a business. We didn't do the tour to make a ton of money, but honestly, I was starting to question my own judgment. Then this music blogger published an email accusing me of hiding the fact that I was CEO of Patreon. The criticism was that I hadn't included the fact that I was CEO of Patreon in the article itself. And meanwhile, Patreon had just raised a $15 million round of venture capital. And that made the tone of this kind of struggling, starving artist narrative in the article feel 
disingenuous. I think I had a paragraph in there at one point that was like, by the way, I'm the CEO of Patreon, you know, here's our product, blah, blah, blah. And I looked at it, I was like, God, this makes it feel like an advertisement for Patreon. So I took it out. And it also felt like it dis distracted from the core story. The email created this tidal wave of press and tweets and a Gawker article that basically said I was insidiously pretending to be a musician when in reality, I was a VC funded tech CEO. That was when I lost it. That's dumb! I wish I could get on YouTube and preach an inspiring hustle culture message about not listening to other people's opinions, but that wasn't true. <laughs> I lost five pounds that week. I stopped eating. This wrecked me. When people said I was a bad business person, that was a bummer. But when people said I was unethical, that broke me. It was the Pomplamoose community, our fans, that kind of held up a mirror to me and helped me see what was happening. Now, in 2021, looking back, it is painfully obvious to me how I fucked this up. Even though I wasn't taking a salary from the company, I was still a CEO who had just raised a Series A round of funding for their company. Not calling that out was a mistake. I should have written that I was CEO of Patreon in the article, and I didn't, and that was a major fuck up. Now I'm super careful to mention that I'm the CEO of Patreon in almost everything that I put out into the world, which actually people give me shit for because they think I'm bragging, but really I just think it's an important disclaimer, which I learned the hard way. A bit later after the Rage Fest ended, it became clear to me that the tour didn't even solve the problem of the tension between Pomplamoose and Patreon. I found myself just unable to do both. There were days where I'd work at Patreon until 10 p.m. and then shoot a Pomplamoose video until 3 or 4 a.m., go to sleep for a couple hours, wake back up at 8 a.m., and then go to work for Patreon. I was dying. That's when Nat and I made a really painful decision to basically put Pomplamoose on hold. And that was the moment where I really felt the identity shift. I felt like I was leaving my artistic career behind. It was awful. It was like the nail in the coffin. Okay, fast forward a couple years. As Patreon grew, I learned how to build teams, how to delegate, and how to run a company. My buddy Ryan and I started a band called Scary Pockets. It only cost me one day a month, but the way we structured our production workflow, we were able to release a new music video every week. So Natalie and I took that creative process and workflow that Scary Pockets had developed, and we applied it to Pomplamoose. And that's what allowed us to start publishing videos again. Now we're making more music and growing faster than we ever have in the band's history. Around the same time that Pomplamoose started publishing videos again, one of the earliest investors in Patreon, Sar Gur, told me a story that completely changed the way I thought about the internet rage fest that I had gone through just a few years earlier. So he said, Jack, I saw this video that you made, or it's a making of video for your robot music video. And I saw you pour your savings account into this video. I saw you invest in something that you believed in. And I saw a person who was willing to go to the ends of the earth to accomplish their dreams and to accomplish their vision. And when I saw that, I didn't need to see the financials of Patreon. I didn't need to see the cohorts. I didn't need to see the metrics. I saw a person who would do anything to make it work. And that's why I decided to invest. When Sar told me that, it made me remember why Pomplamoose did that tour in the first place and why we wrote the article about it and why I made the music video that he saw and why I started Patreon. I did those things because I do go all in on stuff. I am the kind of person who gets really excited about something and then goes for it. And I don't want to change that about myself. I like that about myself. And I realize that sometimes from the outside, that can look reckless. And yeah, sometimes it leads to flops, but sometimes it works. And to me, that makes it worth it. As a creator, when you put something in the world, it's inevitable that you're gonna get shitty comments from somebody on YouTube who thinks you're a total ass. And so a lot of people say, don't read the comments, but I actually disagree with that. What I found for me is that it's helpful to listen to criticism and feedback, as long as I remember that it's not necessarily all always right. Some of it's right on, some of it has a nugget of truth buried somewhere in the middle, and some of it is just trying to change something about me that I actually like. And uh, by the way, my name is Jack Conti, and I am the CEO of Patreon. <laughs>